I want you to understand that the first symbol is known as a pentalpha, from the Greek word for five, pente, um, and it's a five-pointed star. Now this next one is a pentacle. Now it looks similar, but I want you to notice how it is interwoven. It runs through and in between itself. Now this next symbol is what's known as the Star of David, the Morgan David, the Jewish Star, the Seal of Solomon. There's numbers for it. This is the symbol for the nation of Israel. Now, when you take a look at it very carefully, you will notice that it is two equilateral triangles that are interwoven. This shows the union of God with man. However, when you look at the next one, it's similar to it. It's known as a hexagon. This is when you take two equilateral triangles, place one on top of another. Symbolically speaking, you're placing man above God. Now, this next symbol is the foulest, the most evil of all symbols in the occult world. There is nothing that can even come close. It is known as the hexagram. It is the six-pointed star with a circle surrounding it. It is this symbol that must be used during high ceremonial magic or high ceremonial witchcraft when you are summoning up demons to this plane of existence. Doc nos comenta que este símbolo demoníaco se encuentra en el billete de dólar tres veces. If we take a look at the 13 stars directly above the head of the eagle and connect the dots, you will see where the very first hexagram is located. And if you notice that surrounding the hexagram is the 28 guidelines that make a circle. Now, inside every single point, the six points, is a star. There are six of them. They surround now the seven stars. Remember, six is the number of man, seven is the number of God. Now, it is man that is surrounding God or is placed above God. Si lo que dice Doc es verdad, podría estar hablando de lo que dice en la Biblia en segunda de Tesalonicenses. Y se manifieste el hombre de pecado, el hijo de perdición, el cual se opone y se levanta contra todo lo que se llama Dios o es objeto de culto. La interpretación de Doc podría confirmarnos la adoración a Lucifer, donde en la Biblia menciona cuáles son sus intenciones. En lo alto, junto a las estrellas de Dios, levantaré mi trono. Doc nos mencionó que el siguiente hexagrama se podría hallar siguiendo el número 13 representado en los sellos del billete. Tres estrellas arriba de la cabeza del águila. Trece líneas en el escudo, trece hojas en la rama de olivo, trece flechas en la otra garra, y trece palabras completando la frase e pluribus unum, que está en los dos lados de la cabeza del águila, para dar los seis puntos en total del hexagrama. If we take a close look at the same seal and connect all the 13 together, just like we did when we were kids, when we were playing that game, connect the dots. Once we connect all the 13s, it becomes very apparent where the second hexagram can be found. In this one, which is very obvious, already comes with a circle around it. The third hexagram can be found on the other part of the Great Seal. Again, connect all the 13 together, the 13 um, letters, the 13 um, steps in the pyramid, connect all this together. And you will know, with the circle that's already there, it forms the third hexagram. In other words, a six, a six, and a six. A six, six, six. Doc, a lograr decodificar los símbolos del dólar, podría estarnos hablando de lo que dice en Apocalipsis. 
El que tiene entendimiento cuente el número de la bestia, pues es número de hombre. Y su número es 666. We go from the M, and follow the symbol, all the way up to the A. The A cuts directly underneath the eye of Lucifer, all the way to the S. The S connects all the way down, it goes in between the V and the I, and connects all the way to the O. And following the symbol, the O connects up and over along the symbol of the hexagram to the word N. In perfect sequence, it's M A S. O N Mason. It's not what a lot of other people have espoused that the symbol connects down to the M in Cyclorum and that the word is a anagram or something like that. Those people who are doing that obviously don't know what they're talking about or they don't know how to plagiarize me correctly. Because the order of the Illuminati have stated and always will state. This is perfectly spelled out to be M-A-S-O-N, Mason. This points conclusively that the Masons have been involved in the Order of the Illuminati. This was back during the Council of Willemsbad, which would have been July 16, 1782. Notice how it's very busy. Lot of intersection diagonally lines, you can't make out what's there. But let's get rid of the background noise, get rid of all the diagonal lines on, that doesn't belong there, and let's reverse the principle of Roshan and take what's in the background and bring it to the forefront and see what's there. Because once we do that, we find out it's quite obvious that there is another Illuminati owl and that it is perched on something that looks like an arrow. That is what they don't want you to see. Once you see this owl here and compare it to the other one on the left hand side of it, it becomes very obvious that this is an owl. You can now begin to, to distinguish beyond all that busy signals and such that they don't want you to look through. Yet, they placed there in honor of their totem bird, the Owl of Wisdom, which is um, the totem bird because their god, Lucifer, was supposed to have been the wisest of all of God's creation. Wisdom of Lucifer, wisdom into the bird, wisdom into the word Illuminati. Therefore, you know, the chain of wisdom is followed all the way through. at the bottom one of the reverse side of the dollar bill, you'll see on the right hand side that again there's a lot of busy intersecting diagonal lines. Yet, if we apply the same principle we just used to reveal the, the hidden owls of the Illuminati and apply it, you'll find that there is now a skulled faced winged demon and it is very obvious once you take away the background the busy noise it becomes very apparent what it is and that it's been there all along and if we just simply go and enlarge the that section just start with a small one and just keep enlarging it and enlarge it even more even with the background noise there, as I call it, I think it becomes very apparent what we are now looking at. That it is still a skull-faced winged demon. And it is these demons that are protecting and blessing the two great seals of the Order of the Illuminati. And it would make perfect sense 
that it had to be demons used to protect these seals since I am convinced it was those same demons that handed them over to Thomas Jefferson when they first created them. I am convinced beyond all doubt that that indeed was a demon sent up from the bowels of hell, probably under the direct orders of Lucifer himself. 